So here, let's, let's get into trying to understand why would the gravitational force of the moon, for example, cause a semi-diurnal tide? Um, so the moon goes around the Earth, everybody knows, right? Except that's not true. It's not entirely exactly true, right? Um, what would happen, right, if, if the Earth and the moon were the same size? Would the moon go around the Earth or would the Earth go around the moon? Yeah, or, you know, what would happen is that they would both go around, they would kind of dance around each other, wouldn't they? they they'd both go around their common uh, center of mass, which would be halfway between the two, yeah? Well, this is basically what's happening with the Earth and the moon. Uh, the moon does not just go around the center of the Earth, which is nailed in place, and that's very important. The, the Earth and the moon dance around their common center of mass, but the Earth is something like 100 times uh, more massive than the moon, right? So that common center of mass is actually very close to the center of the Earth. It's actually within the Earth. It's, it's closer to the center of the Earth than the surface of the Earth is. Right? But, they are, but, but it's still not at the center of the Earth, and that means that as the moon goes around the Earth, the Earth is also dancing around a bit. So, so if I'm the Earth and there's the moon, the moon's going around me, and I'm also kind of doing something like that, you see? So, so if you can think about being on the Earth, which is doing this kind of circuit, this small circuit, now don't confuse that with the rotation of the Earth. The rotation of the Earth is once a day, every day, okay? This we're talking about once a month. It's doing a circuit. While it's rotating, it's also doing this little circuit, okay? And associated with that alone, well, think, of, think about the forces. Well, the Earth is being attracted to the moon by the moon's gravity. And also, if you want to think about some equilibrium situation, then you have to bring in this idea of the centrifugal force uh, because you want, what we want to get at is what is the effect of a fluid on the Earth, right? So it'll be also subject to this centrifugal force, which is... Uh, has a tendency to be drawn away from the moon relative to the rest of the Earth, okay? So that centrifugal force is pushing it. It's the same everywhere because its rotation is the same everywhere. And it's pushing it away from the moon. So then we can so talk about some equilibrium between the attraction, the gravitational attraction of the moon, which is attracting the Earth and also the ocean, right? And the centrifugal force, which is pushing it pushing the ocean in the opposite direction to the moon. Okay? And so this is where, you know, this, this is where this, the subtlety lies. Okay? So, because, so that gravitational force is, here's the formula, it's big G, the universal gravitational constant, which is this, it's 6.672 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meters squared per kilogram squared times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the Moon divided by the distance between their centers squared, okay? That is the law of gravity, right? So that's the, the gravitational force between the Earth and the Moon, right? What about this centrifugal force? Well, it's going to be the same at the center of the Earth. It's going to be the same because they're in balance, right? So if we think about the net force that's generating the tide, then at the Earth's center, Here's the, the blue arrow is gravity, the force of gravity attracting us to the moon. The red arrow is the centrifugal force, which is equal and opposite at the Earth's center, right? But here's the thing, right? Closer to the moon, there'll be a slightly stronger gravitational attraction because you're closer, right? And it's 1 over r squared law here. So at this point here, for example, the net force, centrifugal force won't change in that direction, that's this term, right? But the force in this direction will be slightly stronger. On the denominator, you'll have r minus a squared, where a is the radius of the Earth. So gravity wins here, and you have a net force towards the moon. On the opposite side of the Earth, the net force is away from the moon because the centrifugal force is the same, but gravity is a bit weaker. Okay, you have an r plus a here, right? So there's a stretching effect the, on, this, on the side facing the moon, the ocean is attracted to the moon. On the side opposite the moon, the ocean is pushed in the opposite direction to the moon. So this kind of stretching effect. And then if you look at the other latitudes, you see the Earth is 
not that far away from the moon. That's why this is important. How far away is the moon? Anybody know? It's 380,000 kilometers, right? It's, it's not that far. It's a three-day trip uh, in a spaceship, right? You, if you get away from the Earth, it takes you... Uh, you know, the, the difficult thing is to get away from the Earth, right? Once you've done that, three days later, you're at the moon. You could even drive there. I mean, uh, I don't know, uh, 380,000 kilometers. It's a bit of an old car, but it's, there are cars that have done more than that, right? It's, it's within our kind of personal understanding. Most of us probably drive that distance in our lifetimes quite easily. So it's within our kind of intuitive grasp, the distance to the moon. And it's close enough that these forces, right, are not even parallel. There's a certain tilt here. It's exaggerated here, obviously. So then if you look at the resultant, it'll have a horizontal component. That is actually also very important because this force here, even though it's lifting the ocean, it's got a huge job to do. It, it, it can't compete with the gravity of the Earth. It's tiny compared to the Earth's own gravity. Right? So that wouldn't actually make a tide. But the fact that you have these converging um, horizontal components, that's what makes the tides possible because they can allow the ocean to flow in sideways and, and create this bulge. Okay? So the horizontal forces and the vertical forces are important in creating what we're going to see is a kind of tidal bulge. Okay? So that's the next thing. So in summary, what have we got here? We've got a difference between two forces because the Earth is a finite object in space which is not too far from the Moon. The radius of the Earth is 6,400 kilometers. The distance to the Moon is 380,000 kilometers on average. And so these two terms are different enough to have an effect. You can combine those two terms to write the equation in full here and then simplify it and it's approximately equal to this, g times n1 times m2 times 2 times the radius of the Earth, right, divided by r cubed. So that's important. You get an r cubed on the bottom. So the actual gravitational of, um, force between the Earth and the Moon, that's a 1 over r squared law. But the, the force that generates the tides, that's a 1 over r cubed law, which means that if you're closer to the object, it's going to have a much, more, a much stronger effect. And that's why the, the moon is so important. Right? <coughs> the sun is important as well. Right? The sun generates tides, but the moon actually has a stronger tidal effect than the sun. Not because the gravitational force is stronger. It's actually a lot weaker. The gravitational force from the sun is massive, much stronger than the, the force from the moon. Right? But this tide-generating force, because the moon is so much closer than, than the sun, the moon is 380,000 kilometers. The sun is 150 million kilometers. It means that the, the moon actually wins. It's about twice as important as the sun for generating tides. Right, so what's the effect of this tide-generating force? So you've got, um, here's the moon, here's the Earth. Um, and all over the Earth, you'll have these, you can draw these force arrows. So let's suppose that these force arrows will then displace the ocean into a, a new equilibrium shape. And it'll be this kind of oval shape. There'll be a lobe which is pointing towards the moon and another lobe which is pointing away from the moon. Well, if you like fruit, okay, you can use the fruit analogy. It's like an orange inside a melon. Okay? So you've got a spherical object inside a prolate spheroid. Or if you like sport, you can use a sports analogy. It's like a football inside a rugby ball. Okay? And so, yeah, so if there's any Americans watching... A football is a spherical object, okay, which you kick with your feet, and that's why the game is called football. All right? Imagine a football inside you, yeah, the long, pointy thing that's called a rugby ball. Football inside a rugby ball, but the football is spinning. okay. So if um, you go round the back and then here and then round the front again, imagine that you're spinning inside this prolate spheroid. You will encounter deeper ocean here, okay? And then round the back, you'll have a shallower ocean like that, okay? But here, round the back. And then on the other side, half a day later, you'll have a deep ocean again. And then you come round the front, and it'll be shallow again, that kind of depth. And so, there you go. Two tides per day, all right? That's the semi-diurnal tide. You just have to imagine the, this football rotating inside this fixed rugby ball. 